Christmas Eve to everybody out there, guys. Again, Merry Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is the big day. Was going to go live for this video, but you guys know, of course, uh, I want to respect your time with your family and also, you know, respect my time with my family as, you know, we're doing this stuff a lot. We're always busy. The regular season is almost here. And we're very, very busy then. So today I wanted to do a little uh, quick dive again into the New York Yankees left field situation. Now, I got news this morning. I want to cut over to that screen real quick. If we could get that baby pulled on up. This is the news I got today is that the D-backs wanted Glaber Torres and Oswald Peraza in a deal for Dalton Varsho, who we all know ended up going to the Toronto Blue Jays, arrival of the New York Yankees, of course. But... The reason I want to bring this up and talk about this really briefly is because I know how fans think, and, and I see a lot of the comments. There's a few comments ago I wouldn't have done it, but there's a lot of comments there that's like, Pete, how in the world did the Yankees not pull the trigger there? Well, guys, look, I think everybody here knows by this time, I don't think Glaber Torres is a winning player. Do I think Glaber Torres is a good baseball player? Yes. Do I think Glaber Torres could be an all-star second baseman? I do. I believe he could be that. He has that potential. I believe that Glaber Torres, though, is set in his ways, and that is not the ways the Yankees need. They can't have Aaron Boone talking to the media about his mistakes that he makes every other day. It's beyond ridiculous that it happened all year last year, and even Aaron Boone to the last game of the season was, ah, oh, he feels bad about it. You know, we, we discussed it. That's ridiculous. It's insane. But I'll tell you this right now. No way in the world would even I have sat there and said, we'll give you our middle infield potentially for Dalton Varsho. And I like Dalton Varsho. I think Varsho's going to do very good in Toronto. He has some good protection there. 27 homers last year. He could easily pop 30 plus. ALE's got some smaller ballparks, especially the right field. I could see Dalton Varsho popping. 30 plus next year. I could also see him maybe having the same year. Maybe even he regresses a little bit. Switch into a different league. But still a good deal in my opinion. Blue Jays had to make some sort of splash. And they did. But on the side of the New York Yankees. That's a deal that I don't necessarily make. Uh, now if it's one of those guys and a few other prospects. I would consider it. But I don't make this type of deal. So today I want to look at four names. Two of those names kind of being new. I don't know how likely it is, but the Yankees have traded with this club before, so maybe it is. But there's two guys out there that, that with every passing day, it kind of feels like maybe these are the guys. And no, Brian Reynolds is not on this list. I'll be honest with you. I've been hearing that they're making minimal, minimal progress. That was uh, yesterday. I haven't heard anything since then. And I'll be honest, after the Varsho trade, whew, I mean... I don't, uh, can the Yankees make a deal? for? Of course, but the Yankees got to be willing to part with quite a bit. It, it's got to be a deal that's going to no doubt about it hurt. And I don't know if Brian Cashman is going to do one of those. I think Cashman's willing to trade maybe one guy, but I think when it gets to those two or three, he gets very, very much cold feet. So let me bring up the first guy, and I want to bring him up first here. Let me bring him up like this first, and then we'll actually look at some of the numbers uh, regarding him. But the first guy, as everybody knows, it is Max Kepler. Trust me, I get it. I know everybody is not a huge fan of Max Kepler. I do hear some bad comparisons, though. The Joey Gallo comparison is a tough one for me when it comes to Max Kepler. The main reason why it is a tough one for me when it comes to Max Kepler is... Kepler doesn't strike out anywhere near the levels of a Joey Gallo does. Good Gallo or bad Gallo. He struck out under 15% of his at-bats last year. The year prior, under 20%. The year prior to that, under 19%. year prior to that, under 17%. To be fair, it's kind of what the Yankees have been looking for. Ground ball rate was also very high last year with the shift. 
again, it probably took away a lot of his hits. Am I making excuses to say Kepler's the guy? I don't think he is. He's good defensively. He's a lefty. The shift is probably going to make a difference for a guy like Kepler. He also doesn't strike out, and he got speed. So I do want to just simply say, for a lot of the people who bring up the, well, he's Joey Gallo, and he's this, and he's that, that's a bad comparison. That That is definitely not a fair comparison for Kepler coming to the Yankees. Do you think he's a major upgrade over an Oswaldo Cabrera? I don't know, but we haven't also seen enough of Cabrera. Do I think that Kepler could come to the Yankees and do well? I actually do. The more I'm looking at it, the more I believe he could. Is it my go-to choice? Of course it is not my go-to choice. So that is, again, Max Kepler. And what is it going to cost the Yankees, guys? Not as much. Not as much as a VAR show. Probably not as much as the next guy I'm talking about either. And, and definitely... Definitely wouldn't cost as much as the other two guys that I'm going to bring up a little later. But the next guy I want to discuss is probably my favorite guy at this point, to be quite honest with you. And that is Jake McCarthy. I've been talking to you guys a whole ton about Jake McCarthy. Now, baseball savant is not a huge fan of Jake McCarthy, but I am. So I actually value that a little more, to be honest with you. And let's also be real here. Just because those certain numbers look cute on a little board doesn't make you the ball player that you want to be. Jake McCarthy, of course, lefty outfielder, good glove, had a very strong year last year for the D-backs. 2.4 war, 321 at-bats, 8 homers, 283 average, 342 on base percentage. Also, 23 stolen bags. The guy could friggin' run. And I tell you what, he has a swing and a build for Yankee Stadium all day er day you guys already know the dealio again if they were asking in a deal for Dalton Varsho from the New York Yankees Oswald Peraza and then also uh, Glaber Torres in that type of deal let me just tell you guys this right now you can start with one of those guys and I think the Yankees could put a serious package together if the Yankees sat back and said hey look we can look at a Glaber Torres and a Will Warren. A Glaber Torres and a um, Luis Heal. Clark Schmidt and Glaber Torres for Jake McCarthy. It is a risk on the point of the New York Yankees because I actually have spoke to some Arizona people that know McCarthy well. And there was times where a lot of people thought McCarthy was a fourth outfielder. They didn't think he would be a major league starter. And then he really put it together. The power became more legit. He he drove the ball a little more. His speed has always played. His defense has always played. And being that lefty bat, uh, knowing the New York Yankees, even though they did get him, they probably wouldn't bat him second. But I could really see a LeMayu McCarthy judge type batting order. And that's really what anybody they get. Even with Kepler, I think you've got to kind of force him. Up top that lineup, maybe, uh, again, if LeMayu is healthy, LeMayu, Kepler, Judge, LeMayu, McCarthy, Judge. The other two guys, I think, could work the same way. But I like Jake McCarthy a lot. I really do. I've told you guys this for a while. I don't know how willing, now that they got Lourdes Goriel, do the Diamondbacks consider going more with McCarthy in the outfield, uh, um, Alec Thomas in the outfield? What is that outfield eventually going to then look like for the Diamondbacks, that is going to be totally up to them and how they figure it. But if McCarthy is still available and they were asking for those two guys, for Dalton Varsho, who I think everybody believed was the better player, uh, hitting-wise, no doubt about it, and he's a little more versatile, I do think you can start a deal with Peraza or with Glaber Torres, maybe with a Clark Smith, and make a deal work out there for McCarthy, who I'm a fan of. The other two guys I don't have highlights pulled up for, but they're two names that I know the Yankees have traded with this team before. And I'm wondering if there's a way the Yankees could work out this deal. Uh, the names being, the team being the St. Louis Cardinals. The names being Dylan Carlson and Lars Newtbar. These are kind of out of there type things. I don't, not, not really like out of there. Like it, it's impossible to happen. I could actually see a trade happening. I think Labor Torres also works very, very good. Labor Torres and or IKF 
work very well, in my opinion, for the St. Louis Cardinals. But they see Dylan Carlson. Only 24 years old, very young, wouldn't be a free agent to 2027. A two-war last year, low, lower batting average, 236. Eight homers, five stolen bags, 316 on base percentage. So the numbers do not jump out at you, right, with Dylan Carlson. You're looking at me go, ah, man, I don't know, Pete. Like, nah, is, is this guy really the offensive threat? Is he an upgrade? He's a top prospect for a little while. Of course, in 2021, had a much better season. Kind of regressed a little bit. Does strike out, good speed, switch hitter, very good defensive in the outfield. And, of course, the other guy being maybe the best baseball name in baseball. We'd love to say this all year. Lars Newtbar. You know we'd have to create a Newtbar t-shirt because he has to have a Newtbar sold at Yankee Stadium. I have to have Nougat in it, I think, and a few other things. I don't know. Maybe Nougat and Walnut. Maybe Nougat, Almond, and uh, White Chocolate. I don't friggin' know. What the hell do I know? Sounds like a... Maybe something already out there. But here is Lars Newt Park. And wouldn't also be a free agent a little later, 2028. 2.2 war last year, 14 bombs, 228 average, uh, 40 RBIs, 53 runs scored, 340 on base percent. He's a guy, again, that does strike out a little bit, but he gets on base. And again, a lot of times, that was a thing with Joey Gallo, and it's always an easy thing to bring up because fans understood it more. If you strike out, you at least have to make sure you're getting on base. So you can't be a low on base percentage guy and high strikeout guy. If you're going to strike out 20 plus percent of the time, you got to get on base at least 33, 34 plus percent of the time. That does really start to balance it out. And again, Newt Bar being a guy that bats left-handed could make sense for him as a guy that could come over, pop up those power numbers. And again, good speed, good defense. That type of player. But guys, I'm just doing my due diligence here for you to fan the greatest fans in the world. The New York Yankee fan base. There is no better fan base in the world than that. And look, Brian Cashman, I need you to go ahead and put this hat on. It's probably not going to happen today. And it probably I wouldn't expect to happen on Christmas. I think we're past that now. Might not hear anything until January. Who knows? But you got to be Santa here, man. You got to get on the horse. Because at the end of the day, I got to keep it real with you. Big Stein is being Big Stein right now. He was from Little Stein, and I'm sorry, he became Big Stein this offseason. He said, no, I'm going to get my guys, and he got them. He did his job. That's nothing Brian Cashman does. So I don't want to hear people say, well, Pete Brian Cashman. No, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. The owner did it. Steinbrenner did this. This was George going out there saying, the, Aaron, Aaron Judge said it. Carlos Rodon, basically, they let on to the, how Steinbrenner wanted this to, to get done. Hal Steinberg to put his money where his mouth is right now. And he said, look, I want these guys. We're going to get them. Brian Cashman's had three damn months to deal some salaries, make something, some sort of deal. He has done jack shit. He's been climbing buildings and sleeping in tents or whatever the frig it is that he does. Got to go out there and make a deal, folks. Got to go out there and make a deal. So, guys, by the way, we have some big announcements coming up in January that we will be discussing with another channel out there. I'm extremely excited about it. I'm so pumped up about it. And of course, you know, me and Bad Dog are going to be having our video very, very soon too. Once a month, State of the Yankees Union. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing that address and doing that one time a month this year. I'm excited about it. Of course, Game Season Lives and all that fun stuff. We're, we're reworking some things. Uh, reworking Game Season Live template videos. Uh, Designated Spitters is getting a whole little revamp going on. So great things here at NYY News TV. And guys, I know I'll have a video for you guys tomorrow that just says Merry Christmas. Uh, but again, in the moment, I can't help but saying it. It is my favorite time of the year. Uh, I am also a very religious person, so it is a great, beautiful time for me and my family, especially a lot of what we've been through over the last two years or so. Um, but you guys are amazing. God bless every one of you. Happy holidays if you do not celebrate Christmas. And if you do celebrate Christmas... Have a very, very Merry Christmas. And for you naughty ones out there, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> On the next time, guys. Talk to you very, very soon. I'm out.